Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Ghost and today we are going to be taking a look at the tier 6 Pan-Asian, or sorry, Pan-European destroyer, the Scone. So, yeah, I do quite like this ship. It's not exactly like the best tier 6 destroyer, but it is pretty good. It's fun. It's a good all-around kind of destroyer in terms of uh, gunboating and torping. You guys are going to see a little bit of that in the gameplay portion. Anyway, enough jibber-jabbering. Let's go ahead and take a look at the upgrades and loadout. We've got Aiming Systems Mod 1. We've got Propulsion Mod 2. And we have Concealment Systems Mod 1 in the final modification slot. We are fully upgraded. Taking a look at the loadout, we've got HE, AP. We've got Torpedoes. We've got Standard Damage Control Parties. We've got three Engine Boosts. And two Repair Parties. And two Defensive AAs on my build. We have the Legends 4-Year Veteran flag along with a Type 3 Camouflage. For the specs, we've got 13,000 hit points on my build, and we've got 6 through 16 millimeters of armor. For the artillery, we've got four 120 millimeter guns that shoot out to 10.7 kilometers on my build with a 3.5 second reload on my build. For the 180 degree turn time, it is a bit long for a destroyer. It's 18 seconds on my build currently. The maximum HE shell damage is a little low for a destroyer, uh, 1700, and the fire setting chance is actually on the higher side with a 7% fire chance on these shells, without even specking into that. And finally, for the AP shell maximum damage, 2150. For the torpedoes, now this is where the ship really shines. I mean, it doesn't really shine, it just it's kind of unique, and I'll tell you why here in a second, but you've got six torpedoes, you've got uh, two triple launchers, 45 second reload on my build, that's right. And the thing that makes them so special is, yeah, they don't do a lot of damage, they only have a yield of a maximum damage of 7,725, but let me tell you, the thing that makes these torpedoes so special is, as you guys can see in the very bottom, these torpedoes can go up to 80 knots on my build. 80 knot torpedoes with a 12 kilometer range. <laughs> that is what the pan, uh, the pan, I keep saying pan Asians, the pan Europeans are all about is their torpedo speed, man. They have phenomenal torpedoes in terms of speed and range, and you guys should see a little bit of that in the gameplay portion. For the AA defense, it is in between, it's pretty good, so if a carrier decides to attack you, you can pop one of your DFAAs and, well, make him go bye bye, okay? AA is pretty decent for a destroyer. For the maneuverability on my build, 36.4 knots. That's pretty low for a destroyer, not going to lie, in terms of speed. Uh, the turning circle radius on my build is a 610 meter turning circle radius with a 3.2 a second rudder. And finally, for the concealment, we've got 5.2 by C, 10.7 while firing main guns, and 7.2 while the ship is on fire. De uh, the detectability by air is 3 kilometers, detectability by air while firing your guns is 5.4, and the detectability by air while your ship is on fire on, on uh, this ship is 6 kilometers. And finally, the guaranteed detectability range is of course 2 kilometers with a guaranteed of 2.4 while firing in smoke. And finally, taking a look at the armor, it doesn't have any. It does not have any armor. It only has up to freaking 16 millimeters of armor. Okay? So, anything that decides to load HE will just shred you. It's it's that simple. Or anything with uh, six inch guns or bigger will just shred, will shred you. So, yeah, you got no armor. That's a destroyer trait, really. Now for the commander, we've got Stig Hansan Eriksson. Eriksson, I, you know, I'm just going to call him Stig. We got Stig on here. We got Eric Bay and Jersey Swirsky as inspirations. We've got our base trait is Thunderbolt, which... Uh, increases our torpedo damage by two and a half, and it also increases or decreases our engine boost cooldown time by also two and a half. We've got subsurface venture, which increases our torpedo speed and increases uh, or decreases our reload speed for our torpedoes. So that's why we're able to get our torps back so quick. And we have look at me now, which decreases our detectability by six percent. We've got back in stock, which decreases our torpedo reload time by six percent. We could put this on. But the reason why I don't put this on is because, well, it decreases our torpedoes quite a lot. Now, the one thing that it does too is it decreases your 
torpedo reload time. So this is actually something that's not a bad option to put on, um, but you only get an extra 400 bit of damage or 300 bit of damage, and I don't know. 10 kilometer torpedoes are just adequate enough, but having 12 kilometer screamer torps is pretty hilarious. I've actually hit people out to max range with these torpedoes, so I just put on back in stock because I don't care about this really. And we have Destroyer Be Destroyed. And finally, we have Give Me Speed. He's a Legendary 2 Rank 15 Captain. And nonetheless, I will see you all over in the gameplay portion of today's video. Okay, so here we are in the Tier 6 Scone. I do believe I got that pronunciation right. Right? Scone? It's not the Skane, it's the Scone. I know I might call it Skane here and often. I might even call it the Scone, I might call it the Scanny, I don't know man, but it's the Scone I believe, technically. So that's what we're going to try to call it for the most part, okay? You gotta keep in mind, I'm just a dumb, ignorant American, so pronunciations of foreign languages are not exactly my strong suit. Anyway, I do apologize also if you guys can hear my dog barking in the background. Do not mind that whatsoever if you guys can. Some of you guys might not be able to, so it's probably not a problem, problem but... Nonetheless, we are in the scone. We are on a domination mode. I actually forgot the name of this map. I I don't even remember the name of it, but um, yeah, we're on a map, and we're going to see what we can do. We're on the left side of the map. It's one of these weird maps that have all of the capture zones sort of like... So on one side, there's two caps, and on the other side, there's just one big cap to fight over. So it's one of these weird maps. And all we're going to do out here for the first few minutes of the game really for like the majority of the match here, is just kind of torpedo around. Um, if you guys will notice, these torpedoes, I mean, we talked about this in the review portion, but the torpedoes are extremely, extremely fast. They're 80 knot torpedoes. So these torpedoes are going to really cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. And this also makes it easier to hit people with these torpedoes. The only downside, though, with these torps is they do have a concealment or a detectability of... 1.6 kilometers so they're gonna be seen out pretty far so battleships potentially have a pretty easy time of dodging these torpedoes unless it's at like close to medium range then well good luck good sir but anyway we have out here in New Mexico this New Mexico is just sailing around stopping going you guys will see pretty shortly I'm actually not gonna be able to hit him with any of my torpedoes because he just does some really unpredictable stuff. Like that. He just decides to turn in out of nowhere. Okay. So, no torpedo hits for me. Now, off to the left, there is a Maya that just got spotted. And then, right next to us, there's a freaking Akatsuki that just got spotted. So, we're going to send our torpedoes out there. And we're going to GTFO. We're going to get the fuck out of here. Because we don't want to be on the receiving end of that. If we can help it. Now, some of you might, you know, criticize me for not opening up with my guns there, but I truly thought that I could maybe hit him with some torpedoes, but nope, it looks like he was not born yesterday, and he is actually going to be able to dodge those torpedoes. I also, though, was concerned about taking shots from that New Mexico and that Maya, so I did not want to open up my guns, you know, to risk losing all my health, so I'd rather, you know, take the easy and safe route, you know what I mean? Nonetheless, though, we made the Akatsuki turn around and kind of go out of here, so that's pretty good. So he's not going to be able to uh, hopefully do anything uh, drastic for the next couple minutes, if you know, if anything. Now we got our torpedoes reloaded already, and we're already sending them back out. So as you guys can see, I mean, the torpedo reload on my build is 45 seconds. That is crazy fast. That is actually the fastest torpedo reload for any destroyer at tier six. Shit, I don't even think there's any tier five or. Freaking, oh, there are some tier 4 destroyers that can reload even quicker. <clears throat> Kamikazes and Minikazes, but we don't talk about those. But yeah, the torpedoes reload really quick. So yeah, they don't do a lot of damage. They don't have a stupid amount of yield in terms of torpedo damage. But what they do have is they come back really quick and they have a decent chance of setting floods. So these are really good sort of aerial denial sort of torpedoes. And one thing to mention too, if you need to use your guns to kill an enemy destroyer or even just daka daka, you can do that, like we're about to do here. The guns on the skein, sorry, the scone, see? There it is, my ignorant American coming out again. <laughs> the scone, the guns on the scone are actually pretty good. You've got four or five inch guns and they reload pretty quick and they have a decent fire chance, so 
you can actually be a viable gunboat as well. And, you know, like I said, these are an all-around good... They are, they are all-around good destroyers in terms of torpedoing, in terms of guns. Now, the only downside with this destroyer, in my opinion, is it doesn't have a smoke screen. I haven't even talked about that yet. It's one of the uh, only few destroyers that actually doesn't have a smoke screen at tier 6. And this is actually a common occurrence throughout the whole entire pan-European line. None of them have smoke screens. But what they do have is they have heals. Now, notice that our patience did actually pay off here because we just took out that enemy Akatsuki. Uh, yeah, we didn't open up on him earlier in the game, but we did finish him off just now. So there you go. I mean, hey, we're up to 13,000 damage. Um, I'm going to quickly remind you guys, speaking of damage, we're not going to do a whole lot of damage in this game, but we are going to do our job, and that right there is ultimately what will win us this game. Doing our job actually wins us this game. Getting these capture zones and taking shots at enemy destroyers when necessary, okay, there's a difference between taking shots at a destroyer when necessary and taking shots at a destroyer that might potentially get you killed. So you want to be careful when you're choosing your engagements in any destroyer, especially destroyers that don't have smoke screens like the scone. So, yeah, anyway... We took out that Akatsuki. Our team has done pretty good up to this point. They've got the, uh, they've got, actually, that, that cap automatically gets given to us. I don't know what we're talking about, or what I'm talking about. But our team has killed a bunch of people already, and we have flipped the capture zone here at Bravo. So, there you go. So far, we are doing pretty good. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not playing like a complete potato this game. Let's just put it that way. And ultimately, getting that capture zone is actually going to help us win the game later on. Spoiler alert. I know. So, one thing I want to just remind all of you guys. If you guys are playing your destroyers, or any ship for that matter, do your job. Play smart, and essentially don't be a dummy. Like, don't just throw your ships away. Um, you know, play smart, guys. Because, ultimately, the goal at the end of the day is to win games. Even if you guys don't like winning games, or for some reason... That is the end goal for this for this game. That's the point of Legends, is to hopefully do your best to do your part and to win the game. This is a team play game, and it's of course a game that is quite competitive, so you need to be playing it as such. Getting those caps, taking out destroyers, doing whatever it takes to win is ultimately the most important part, okay? Anyway, with that out of the way, we have a, we're already coming around the backside into their spawn and we are going to start raining torpedoes down into these guys because so far the Maya on that side of the map that we were just on really didn't put up much of a fight against us. I mean, we were able to just kind of sneak around, torpedo around, gunboat around, and we kind of got away with a lot there. But now we were able to actually come around here, push through Bravo, and actually start to get into a position to where we can just rain torpedoes down on these guys and, of course, rain some of these five inch guns down on these guys as well so there you go i mean we already got a fire that's our first fire of the game this queen elizabeth is not having fun and look at those torpedoes 12 kilometer torpedoes coming in hot baby you better watch out and well that queen elizabeth yeah he is uh, not having fun whatsoever that's three torpedo hits and we're already up to thirty-five thousand damage and we're gonna keep ticking the damage because we have a fire going now the enemy Z-39B has just got spotted, so we're going to start opening up on him with our 5-inch guns. And we are going to, yeah, have a little bit of a gunfight here. We still have one of our heals, so, which is pretty fun. So we're going to be able to stick into this gunfight, use our range as well, you know, get some distance between me and him, and just gun him down. That's exactly what we're going to do. As you guys can see, we're not even a gunboat build, and we're able to just freaking put out loads and loads of firepower. You gotta love it. See, this is why I like these destroyers. If I can't torpedo people, at least I can become a gunboat. You know what I mean? I've got that backup. So, there you go. And as you guys can see, we are slowly whittling down this Z-39B. You guys gotta keep in mind, too, that the Z-39 and most of the German destroyers have really large amounts of hit points. Now, we did just take out that Queen Elizabeth with the uh, second rack of torpedoes that we sent out there. And down she goes. That's our second kill of the game. We're up to 54,000 damage. And we are slowly but surely whittling this Z-39B away. Um, it's taken me a bit because these shells don't do a lot of damage. 
As you guys can see as well, I'm trying to slow down to also throw off his shots. And we are doing a pretty good job of it. He is struggling to hit us. But as you guys can see, we are just actually managing to hit him pretty consistently. So, unfortunately though, we are getting some weird shots where shells are falling short and going over and whatnot. That might just be me aiming poorly, but hey, nonetheless, I mean, we're going to take him out anyway. As you guys can see, oh, 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 it looks like he's actually dodging a lot of our shells. Oh, he's getting shot at by another guy. Come on, front gun. Get him, front gun. Oh my gosh, it's going around him. And it's about... Oh no! Come on, why aren't I killing him? And of course, the kill gets yoinked. I do, I do a majority of the damage. And of course, the Z39 comes in here and says, Yoink, that's my kill. Thank you, Z39. Thank you very much. <laughs> but anyway... So far, we're up to 60,000 damage. We've got two kills. We should have had a third kill, but it got stolen from, uh, from us in true, uh, in, true, in true World of Warships fashion. But anyway, we are starting to actually, uh, you know, potentially losing this game here. Our team is actually throwing this game. So, what we're doing is we're not allowing that. We're going to start racing towards the Charlie cap here and flipping it into our name because we need to get those caps. Okay, we're trying to win this game still. We did just take out that enemy destroyer, so we have a clear line to go into Charlie and flip it. And that's exactly what me and this Z-39 are going to do. So, yes, the Z-39 yoinked the kill, but still, I guess he got the kill anyway. He needed to die, so there you go. But he's also going into the cap, so... The Z-39 is actually not a bad kill yoinker, if you will. He's actually playing the game exactly how you're supposed to. He's shooting at destroyers, and he's getting into the cap. It's good to see. It is freaking good to see. Now, if you guys look at the mini-map, one of our cruisers right now is in a brawl or in a fight with a uh, with a Scharnhorst and a... I think it's a New Mexico, I, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember, but it's a Scharnhorst and something. It's another battleship, and uh, he's actually... Uh, he's going to die... But he will actually take one of those guys with him, which is going to really help shortly. So look over there on the left there. That battleship is pretty low on HP. Uh, they did finally just take out our cruiser. They did just take him out, so we're actually behind now on points. But we're flipping the Charlie cap, so we're actually going to start catching up on points. But also, look at that battleship's health. He's on fire. He is burning. It's a Bayern, by the way, not a New Mexico. We did just flip this cap, by the way. But that Bayern is actually burning alive. I'm actually sending also some torpedoes out here so I can maybe hit something with them. But that Bayern is burning alive, and it's actually going to give the dead cruiser on our team a flesh wound and an arsonist. <laughs> Back from the dead. The cruiser getting a flesh wound and an arsonist medal while he's actually at the bottom of the ocean. So that's actually going to really help us in terms of points, because as you guys can see... We went from being behind on points to being ahead on points, and now we have two out of the three caps again. So we are going to maintain that points lead. Also, one thing to point out, too, we don't need to be superly overly aggressive because we're winning this game. There's only two minutes or three minutes left of this match. There's absolutely no need to YOLO our ships away. We could, in theory, just kind of sit back and let the points slowly tick up, and we will win this game on points. Now, the Maya did just get spotted. I sent some torpedoes out that way because, well, why not? And then the Sharnhorse gets spotted. And then our Z-39 decides to say hello and YOLO around the corner. I don't know why he's doing that. He has absolutely no need to YOLO a Sharnhorse. We are in the lead. Uh, and as you guys can see, our team really is trying to throw this game. This could have easily turned into a game of throws if I was not in this match. If I was not in this game here, I guarantee it, this team would have lost. So thank God that I was on this team, because without me, we weren't going to win this game. I know that may sound a little bit arrogant, but it's true. Uh, I will show you guys also at the end of the match, too, where we place on the leaderboard. You guys could probably guess. Although we're not doing a lot of damage, but we're making up for that damage loss in terms of XP gained by getting those caps and, of course, defending those caps. Now notice I'm not sticking around. I know that Maya is charging in. I got my engine boost activated and I sent some torpedoes around that corner where that Sharnhorst is going to barrel around. So hopefully those torpedoes will take him out. As you guys can see too, look at the top. 
We've got 40 seconds left until we win this game. So all I need to do here is just hold out and we win this game on points. It's that simple. And as you guys can see there, we actually did just get our third kill of the game there on that enemy Sharnhorst and we took him out and we're up to 61,000 damage. He was left on basically no HP. We kind of yoinked that kill from the Z39. So we did get a little bit of revenge there for him yoinking the Z39 kill earlier. So we will take it. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, that's a win. I'm actually going to take a cheeky shot uh, before I go behind the island at this Maya just to piss him off a little bit. <laughs> he fired his guns, but I turned and dodged him pretty easily. And we also did get a couple defense ribbons there with those couple hits we got. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We solo handedly won that game there for our team. And as you guys can see, 61,000 damage. And we were top of the leaderboard with 2.8k base XP. And I only did 60,000 damage. So there you go. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I hope you all did enjoy it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out. Stay healthy. As always.